Hi, my name is Adrienne Wilson, and I'm a graduate student in the chemistry department at Duke University. In this video, I would like to talk a little bit about one potential way to mitigate climate change through the conversion of carbon dioxide into alternative fuel. My short story here is a good example of how scientific research is critical to society, addressing some of the most dire challenges it faces. Climate change is one of society's biggest problems at present, bringing about rising temperatures that are causing species to go extinct, rising sea levels, longer periods of drought for some areas of the world, and increased number of more intense storms in other areas, like the recent Typhoon Haiyan. Worse still, rising temperatures are rapidly melting the Arctic ice cap, creating a positive feedback loop that will only increase the rate at which the atmosphere absorbs heat. <clears throat> By now, scientists say that it is extremely likely that the warming of the atmosphere is due to human influence. Humans generate most of the total emitted greenhouse gases in the form of carbon dioxide, and most of that is generated from our fossil fuel usage. The constant addition of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere has caused the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide to increase steadily towards nearly 400 parts per million over the last several decades. This may not seem like much, but the currently accepted maximum level at which we can hold carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere without seeing severe effects of climate change is 350 parts per million. This means that we not only have to stop putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, we also have to start pulling it out somehow. Carbon dioxide capture and sequestration is one option to prevent more CO2 from being released into the atmosphere. Um, this is instead done, we trap it and then pump it deeply underground. This technique could store between 1,800 and 20,000 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide underground in the U.S. alone. However, sequestration comes with several downfalls, including concern for leaks even though it's pumped, <clears throat> excuse me, very deeply underground, um, increasing monetary costs of sequestering the carbon dioxide, and also increasing, and very large to begin with, energy costs of transporting carbon dioxide and pumping it underground. Um, also, importantly, this technique can only be applied to stationary sources of carbon dioxide, like power plants, and does nothing to address the carbon dioxide that's already in the atmosphere. Underwater storage in igneous rock chemically binds the carbon dioxide to, to the storage site, creating um, added protection against leaks, but you still have to get the carbon dioxide from a stationary source. At least one company has embarked on the enterprise of pulling CO2 out of the air. In this case here, a capture liquid is passed through a specially designed capture tower, and when air flows through the tower, it comes in contact with this liquid and is pulled out of the air. And this is one way we can start to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, but again, you have to do something with the carbon dioxide once you have it. So, taking one big step forward, what if we could use carbon dioxide to make fuel, giving it value and eliminating the costly need to store it? Um, so one way to do this would be by converting carbon dioxide to formic acid for use in a direct formic acid fuel cell. Direct formic acid fuel cells are very similar to hydrogen fuel cells, but instead of hydrogen, you're using formic acid. Um, formic acid and water are pumped into the fuel cell where it comes into contact with an electrical potential or an electrical energy source and is oxidized to carbon dioxide and hydrogen, um, creating a current that can power our devices or our cars. Um, to complete the cell, we only need air to flow through and we generate water. So it's very green and um, would be a good alternative to fossil fuel usage. Um, why carbon, or why formic acid rather over hydrogen? Well, there are several reasons. For one, it's easier to transport as a liquid whereas hydrogen is a gas. There's, it's more energy dense than hydrogen. Um, and it's also safer because we all know that hydrogen is flammable. So, just as you can convert formic acid to CO2 using an electrochemical cell, you can also convert CO2 into formic acid by reducing it at an electrochemical cathode. To do this requires a metal catalyst on the electrode that will help to lower the energy 
needed to transform carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is a very stable molecule. Of most metals that have been tested throughout um, scientific research, copper seems to be the only one that can reduce carbon dioxide into a variety of different products while requiring much less electrical energy to do so relative to the amount of electrical energy or potential predicted by thermodynamics. Researchers have also found that nano-sized copper on an electrode can reduce the excess electrical energy relative to the theoretical um, required amount even more. Um, so in this case, the nanowires required only approximately 0.4 volts excess energy or potential over what thermodynamics predicts. So this begs the question, can we find a copper nanocatalyst that can lower the energy requirements of the reaction even further and selectively only make formic acid. By adding a second metal and systematically studying the effect of the nanoparticle composition and structure on the outcome of CO2 reduction, I think it's possible. In my graduate research, I was able to construct gold palladium catalysts with different shell thicknesses of palladium surrounding a gold core and can make these into alloyed or fully mixed um, nanoparticles just by exposing them to heat. With this series of catalysts, I hope to understand how the nanoparticle structure fundamentally changes their function as catalysts. So in my work, using the, when I used the alloyed catalysts in reaction, I found that the amount of palladium and gold in the catalyst did make a difference on the selectivity of the catalyst to produce different products and also its effectiveness in producing more products per active atom on that nanoparticle. This method could be used in the copper reduction um, of CO2 case um, and could be used to develop a two metal copper containing catalyst that only makes formic acid from carbon dioxide at the lowest applied potential possible that we could then use in a formic acid fuel cell and we can start to think about carbon dioxide powered electricity as a reality. This type of research and other efforts in energy generation and storage represent a field that I want to advocate for and contribute to in my career. Um, it is only one way that science could drastically change the world as we know it for the better. There are a lot of other ways that it could do this through education of others or health sciences. Um, but this is my favorite example. Um, I hope I've communicated to you my zeal for progress through science and why I would like to be a voice for it. So I'd like to thank you for your time and for taking the time to listen to this.